I always talk about intensity and extensification or extensity. And in, in some workouts you're intensifying, in other workouts you're extensifying. But then, but the que- the reality is, is those extensive workouts can also be high stress if they get pushed too far at a given l- workload. Because even in that green zone, it's a quasi steady state. The same happens inside the human body when we talk about intensity and conditioning. There's different states inside depending on what, how hard we're going. Now there's a transition point, and in exercise physiology, we call that a threshold. You've probably heard the word before. Domain. Intensity. Intensity. Domain. Zone. For zone. Threshold. Um, so we have the moderate domain, um, the heavy domain, and the severe domain. It, it's important to, to, to really establish where are the intensities that you want to stimulate today, and don't mix them very um, um, uh, no, don't mix them uh, or, or be careful if you mix them, you know, for example, if you're going to do zone two training and you start by doing high intensity in the first kilometers or some sprints, you know, uh, yeah, you, you're going to have a hormonal response, mm. right? Uh, you're going to have a high levels of catecholamines, you're going to have a high lactate levels, lactate, as we mentioned, is going to decrease CPT1, CPT2 uh, and fat oxidation and uh, the GRP81 receptor. So we don't know exactly when this di- that daddy phase is going to subside where you're in a clear zone two you know what i mean but i try to be careful at mixing things um that that's how i see it just because you can disrupt some bioenergetics and some uh, hormonal uh, responses so it's not no, no, these thresholds should represent the transition from moderate to heavy and heavy to severe so moderate you know we know it's the you know just briefly you know discuss the systemic responses mm-hmm. is that we get a a quick plateau and via an auction uptake um, or VO2 consumption in roughly three minutes. Um, and blood lactate, you know, if you're a healthy or moderately trained individual, should so remain at baseline. But we've all done lactate on unfit individuals and that thing goes up from the start. So it's kind of hard to actually, you know, there's a little bit of restriction with that. With the heavy, we see this delayed steady state in VO2 consumption or it's known as slow component. And uh, we see black tape, blood lactate above baseline. And then the um, Severe domain of exercise, we'll look, it's this non-steady state exercise. So we see this continual increase in VO2 consumption, a v- incre- uh, continual increase in blood lactate accumulation. Um, so we thought, okay, well, how, if we can determine, you know, the transition or assign, you know, LT1 or GET and actually say, okay, which one of these actually represents the transition from moderate to heavy? And that should be the central question. And, you know, we looked through the literature and it's like, well, not a lot of people even answered this question. So. The way that people have answered the question was they took VT1 or GET and said, well, actually it's 80% of that. Boom, it's moderate. It's like, well, you know, that's like 30 watts. I mean, that's not very finite. It's pretty blunt, you know, or they did the same, you know, we'll do the difference between GET and critical power. It's like, well, obviously it's in the, it's, it's, they're good demarcators of the domains. Um, so what we tried to find was uh, who actually, you know, looked at the, med- looked at the transition from moderate to heavy using a VET, VT1. So they, you know, did somebody do a study where they measured VT1 and then looked at, you know, the systemic responses five watts above that if we're talking about cycling or 10 watts and 15 watts and then down five, 10, 15. I mean, that's the ideal. Then you can get the sensitivity of the measure. Mm-hmm. And I mean, basically no one had done that. And so we, you know, we tried to synthesize all this research saying like, looking at LT1 or GET, no one's explicitly looked at the sensitivity of the trans of these measures to to be a determinant of the transition between moderate and heavy. And so we kind of put all that research together and discussed it and what needs to be done. The only volumetric measurements we have today is time, velocity, time, power, and time metabolics, basically. There's are only volumetric measurements we are. So if I would say that there was, there's one single metric, which is the most important one you can. And then of course, now you have to put it into a system because as a runner, you're not gonna always run flat. There will be other things that are affecting like wind, gradients and these kind of things. But at least if you're trying, if you want to have one, then I would say that a clock and distance and accurate distance are the two most important metrics that you have available to assess whether something is working.
or not working. So when you maybe then make a standardized workout, for example, as a benchmark workout that you repeat at a, at a certain pattern in your program, you're looking basically, okay, do basic have, have, have the, the intervention that we did now over the previous period or even over the last week, are we able to bring that into a slightly better performance now? this week or or or, or uh, compared to previous weeks and if you if you see that of course then you know that you are doing something correct but what are what you have been doing correct of course that's where you can now start to add the next layers of instruments to try to understand what really did change now to make this better for me high intensity is anything that goes that is in the liquid or the gas form you have the solid stuff the base here the base here is universal. Doesn't matter who you are, what you're good at, what you're bad at. This is what's gonna help you do more work, push harder, and ultimately perform better. And if we talk from a health standpoint, be healthier as well. Because this is where you build all the good stuff. The mitochondria, the ability to use fats as a fuel, the ability to open up your veins, arteries, to let more blood flow through, let more oxygen go in and come back out. This is where all the good stuff happens, and this is for everybody. The most accurate way to determine someone, and I think critical speed and critical power are quite are quite, quite good, and I'm obviously I'm, I'm quite biased to it. The ideal circumstance is having a middle distance runner, you know, that, you know, 800 to 3K, right in that, that range, even sometimes 5K, running on the Diamond League circuit and running a different distance every week. Because <laughs> you can construct, because in the Diamond League, they run for time, right? They're not they're not running 72nd quarters at the start and then and then sprinting, you know, coming home at a 49. Like, they don't do that. They run for time for, because now they've dropped the time so fast. Like, um, so, you know, getting that, getting those world championship Olympic qualifiers are the national qualifiers. Like that to me is the ideal. So nowadays I kind of talk in terms of green or orange red, you know, it kind of, it's kind of a mix and it can be threshold that, that starts in zone three and moves into zone four. It can be a zone four workout. You know what I'm saying? So, because that's a, that's a, a dynamic. Once you get across that threshold of the threshold, it is dynamic in the sense that the internal load is not constant it is it is drifting upward and so that also is part of that uh the importance of that demarcation uh is that you can you can stay in a quasi steady state if you're fairly fit in that low intensity green zone 65 percent of vo2 max you can do several hours and well-trained athletes stay pretty steady there for for a long time but once you move into that you know above the lt1 and and clearly once you move closer to lt2 now we're now we're in this dynamic zone where your ftp is changing it's deteriorating as you as you go so that's where we start seeing that fat max um when you reach the fat max it's kind of the point where your type 1 muscle fibers, the oxidative muscle fibers, are reaching their fullest capacity to, to for fat oxidation. But when you pass that metabolic point, that's when you start moving into the more um, uh, recruiting, more uh, fast twitch muscle fibers. And you, you start relying more on uh, glucose uh, uh, because, yeah, the muscle contractile necessities, they need, need to uh, produce, synthesize ATP faster and fat uh, fat oxidation, although produces significantly more ATP, it's, it's lower, right? So you need to produce faster uh, ATP, and for that you need glucose, and that's where you start moving away from that flat max and rapidly decreases, uh, and, and, and you start utilizing more glucose. So that, that point, it, 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 it's quite easy to, to, um, to see in the laboratory, uh, looking at substrate utilization, right? Looking at the fat max, and, and that I use it as a point where I see, okay, now uh, that the fat max starts decreasing and it sometimes is a sharp decrease, definitely that, that person is already uh, recruiting a lot more uh, fast twitch muscle fibers and relying on glucose, which is also what we also see, right? It's a sharp increase in, in glucose um, uh, oxidation and also in lactate accumulation.
It, do you then and that coincides with the zone two, <laughs> right? I, w- I was going to say is so because the zone two, from my understanding, at least the zone two goes, I guess, from the top boundary of zone one and then all the way to that first lactate threshold or first threshold, fancy threshold, however we, we, we want to define it. Um, is it more beneficial then to always work at the top of your zone two or should you actually maybe optimize your work and be more around your, your fat max if that point's a little bit lower and maybe stay more close or closer to that uh, optimal fat oxidation uh, intensity when you're trying to optimize your mitochondrial function. And for those who haven't done uh, a lactate test or any other type of test that allows you to determine precisely where those boundaries are and what intensities you, you should use to train, a very easy way to do it for everybody is to go by feel. RPE, rating of, per- of perceived exertion, how hard it feels out of 10, okay? That stuff should feel easy. Two to three out of 10. You should be able to hold a conversation. You should be able to talk on the phone. You might be barely sweating at the end of it. We're just moving. It's better. But we can also think of it the other way that that is not needed before it is needed. So as long as you basically see there's a progress, a progress, then you know that, okay, fine, we are on the track. And when things stagnate, that doesn't necessarily mean that something is wrong, but you can already just from time and velocity itself and if you now do assessment at different velocities and durations you also now get a profile of the athlete and you can see whether uh, he's, how is basically the curve of this changing now is he increasing in the short to in the short domain or in the or in the longer domain um, and what is it that you really try to, to achieve if you wa- really want to excel in the longer domain longer domain but you see that it's stagnating there now but it's developing the shorter domain that means that well for the amount hours that are available now let's try to redistribute a little bit so we are, re- we are bringing down a little bit now the volume that you are spending on for example the shorter shorter domain and then bring it over to the longer domain so there you can it, it is basically just the imagination that uh, that sets a limit to what you can do with even extremely simple instruments like like time and just a stopwatch and a distance because if you just put the right protocol and method together there you can already there get a fairly good understanding of what really is happening and how the athlete and the individual athletes are responding to one program to two athletes same program only with a stopwatch you can basically see that okay with the same program now we see that these athletes are progressing more in the short duration domain compared to the longer and the other athlete the other and that's already there can inform you that you need to start to do an individualization there. So it's only the imagination that basically has a limit to, to, to the creativity to how we can use even the simplest instruments uh, in, in, in developing athletes.